This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Welcome back to our coverage live from Big 12 Media Days. It is another three mop pod. I am John Kurtz. We have swapped out Cole Manbeck for Derek Young. And uh, <laughs> more importantly, we have Gene Taylor, uh, K State Athletic Director and uh, your reigning FBS Athletic Director of the Year, uh, here with us at Big 12 Media Days in Arlington. Before we get into that, I do have to remind you, please support Holiday Distillery. This podcast would not be happening without them. Great K-State folks who support us, so support them. They've got your 360 vodka, your Ben Holiday bottled in Mont Bourbon. For whatever it is that you're trying to do this summer, if you're hanging out at the lake, if you are preparing for tailgate season, just go stock up while you can. Uh, I don't know which one of those. Sounds good to me. Yeah, which one of those would be better for you, Gene? What's, what's going to be at the lake house? Well, I don't have a lake house, but okay. hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty flexible. As long as it's cold and, and, and you know, keeps me from being too thirsty then I'll drink it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you were a Bud Light guy last night. I was. Is that I'm still, still, yeah, no, I'm still. I'm not okay. giving up on him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Up on him. <laughs> okay, good. You know. All right. Well, uh, could you have dreamed you'd be sitting here this year talking about all the things that, that you are from the past year, what this last athletic year was for you guys? Well, you know, you you, you kind of hope, right, that as an athletic director, you have a year like that. It's it's never easy. You know, obviously, the lot of conversation about kind of where we're sitting with this end zone, apparently, <laughs> was a pretty big end zone. Um, but no, I mean, you, you have a year like that. I've told our staff, it'd be nice if you could bottle a year like that up. And then when you have a, you know, not a great year, you could drink out of it and kind of remember what it feels like because, you know, we go through them so quickly and then we, you know, we, next thing we do, we're focused on the next season. And sometimes we don't take the time to smell the roses and enjoy it. But I do think our staff have done that. I think our coaches have done that. But, you know, you roll around to July 4th and you're already ready to, roll with the next football season or the next basketball season, whatever the case may be. But yeah, it's uh, it was a phenomenal year and it was great to be a part of it. Do you feel like you're treated any differently as an athletic director, not only with the individual <laughs> accolade, but just what, what you guys did this year? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously you feel it from the fans and, and you feel their excitement and you, you know, they thank you. And, you know, I feel sometimes guilty because it's not like I'm coaching or playing. Um, you know, I'm not out there sweating every day like the players are worrying you know uphill midnight doing you know game planning but you appreciate the fact that they appreciate the success uh, they are so supportive of our program you know to be able to have them enjoy that and be a part of that and say yeah well great thank you can you continue to support us at that level because it's really really hard and that's what i tell our coaches all the time we want our goals to win big 12 championships but it's really difficult to do that and if you were to go back and evaluate each of our football games, how close we could have lost the games that we won and how close we could have, we should have won the games that we lost. And, you know, you take that into account every year. And I remember doing that when I was in North Dakota State and we'd go, you know, 15 and one. And you'd look back and say, we could have easily been, you know, eight and seven, you know, yeah. the ball bounces your way. So I think you just really got to appreciate a year like that. You also got the volleyball facility built. You opened up the, the practice facility for football as well. Are you more proud of all that stuff that's kind of went up on your watch or the winning because you're it's kind of too pronged at this point? Well, yeah, you know, it's kind of a combination. Obviously, I feel really, really good for our student athletes because of the investment that our donors have made in them. And we just in, unveiled the, the new volleyball, the Morgan family volleyball arena with, those, with the Morgan family. That's what I told our athletes. I said, this investment isn't necessarily about their name. They certainly appreciate having their name up there, but it's about understanding the importance of giving our athletes those kind of facilities to prepare in so they can maybe be in this game someday or be in the NSA tournament or make a deep run. And, and, and that's what our donors understand. So I feel really good about that when I come in, that there's a major investment in the success of our student athletes. And yeah, I take great pride in it because I think we have phenomenal facilities. You look at that complex, and it's really probably one of the most complete complexes I think in the country of everything right there. Uh, we still have some work to do with golf and tennis, and you know that's down the road. But uh, yeah, it's it's cool to come into work every day and look at those facilities because you know what, this is pretty 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 neat to be a part of. You touched on it. it's kind of like the cost to compete the cost to entry, so to speak, at this level, some of that will be because of coaches, because they've won as much as they have. What is the progress on Jerome Tang and trying to get him locked in for the foreseeable yeah, you know, future? It's, it's going really well. I've mentioned this today a couple of times. There are agents in this business that you really don't want to work with. Um, <laughs> matter of fact, I'll tell you a story that when we were hiring Chris Kleiman and we worked with a search firm, I said, if any coach that we're talking to has this or this agent, we're not talking to them. 
Uh, we, fortunately, Chris has got a great agent. He understands. He wants to do his best for Chris, but he also understands who we are at K-State. Yeah. And same with, with Coach Tang's agent. They understand. They want to help him, want to make sure they get the best deal. But they understand where we are. And so right now, we're kind of through most of the heavy lifting. And they've got it, and they're in no real big hurry. And I don't ask Coach Tang about it. And when it happens, it happens. But uh, the good news is they both have great agents that really want to help them and understand where we are at K-State, and, and they're really easy to work with. Well, when you have the success that you guys have had, obviously the, the price does go up, yeah, right, for coaches, not just the head coaches, the assistant coaches, NIL, like players that they're chasing. Uh, How is it? Having that is kind of a new problem, I guess a good problem, but just managing everything that comes along with the winning that you guys you have. Know, you keep, you know, it keeps you on your toes. You know, and obviously NIL is changing um, almost on a daily basis. You've got states passing different rules that give various schools you know, an advantage over maybe a Kansas, you know, Texas and Oklahoma. So I think we just have to really remind our donors that NIL is important. We're going to use it the right way. We're not going to use it as inducements. We're going to be able to tell recruits, hey, if you come to K-State, there are really good NIL opportunities. Um, but we also have to remind our donors, as they move away from the facility enhancements and the big facility campaigns, we need to take those investments back into the operation dollars so we can keep good coaches, so we can keep good staff. I mean, we're not only you know challenging ourselves from coaches' salaries, but we have great staff that you know, these schools like the Big Ten and the SEC that pay so much money. I mean, yeah. like our top marketing people, our top fundraisers are going because they're getting paid so much. So we need to really help our donors understand we continue to invest in us collectively uh, as opposed to just NIL. But NIL is important, no question about it. Well, I know fans will ask about that a lot, and we certainly get that question a lot. Like, hey, how competitive is K-State actually in an NIL world? I know there's a difference between just throwing money out there, getting involved in bidding wars, and, and just right. being adequate in NIL, but how would you describe where you guys are relative to your peers in yeah, that? I think, I think we're competitive early on. I think as things begin to change, you know, with even the, some of the other sports like the baseballs and the even the tracks of the world, that uh, we need to understand that and help our donors understand that. But I've told our donors from the very beginning that, you know, we can have all the NIL money in the world, but if we don't have good coaches to coach them, we're not going to be very successful and we have to balance that and you know there are schools out there that have great nil a lot of money that they're throwing their athletes and you know they're finishing eight and five and they're going to lesser bowl games and they're not playing in championships and not going to the NSA tournaments and their donors are throwing all this money at these athletes and they're like well, wait a minute what's going on and i think that's what i continue to stress with our donors is guys we need both but we we can't win if we don't have great coaches and great support systems to give these student athletes the opportunity to compete for championships. The conference realignment thing keeps turning as well. Some you hear, you know, we'd like to be at 14, even beyond Texas and Oklahoma. Some schools get mentioned. The Pac-12 is still working on a media rights deal. Where do you kind of sit and how things should align for the Big 12? You know, it's really more about just talking as a group with, with in particular, Coach, uh, uh, Commissioner Yormark. You know, he has been great. Uh, he's great to work with. I was fortunate to be the chair of the ADs this year. Got to work with him a little bit closer. Uh, he's very aggressive. But he also understands that he's new to college athletics and he doesn't understand all the nuances. But, um, you know, what we talk about is the what ifs. What if this happens? Where should we go as a conference? Uh, do we need to go right now? Is this school that somebody that's going to bring us a positive deal so those are the conversations we have we don't really get in to say okay we're, we got to go focus on the school it's more about the what ifs you know what's going to happen in the Pac-12 if the Pac-12 doesn't you know if they get a TV deal and there's nobody else out there do we need to expand and so those are the conversations we have ultimately at the end of the day the presidents have to approve it but we'll give our feedback if something breaks that we'll say yep yeah, Brett this is really the direction we want you to go first and then come back and let's look at what the next steps are. But he's been great to, to work with. But he's, uh, he's, he's, he's moving. He's not, he's not sitting around with his hands. Would you like to expand? I don't know. I think it has to be the right thing for us as a conference. Uh, you know, I really like the 12 that we're ultimately going to be. You know, this year's obviously we're going to be with 14. I think with Texas and Oklahoma leaving, uh, I do think that this next remaining 12 is really strong in a lot of ways. Um, so that's why if we do expand, it has to be what's best for all of us and what's best for the Big 12. If it makes sense, yeah, let's do it. If it doesn't, I think that's where we have those conversations of maybe we don't need to do that right now. 
been some discussion about basketball only members potentially. Are you on board with that or think that could work? I think it just again depends, right? You know, one of the things that Brett has talked about publicly is in the next TV deal. Do you separate out basketball and, and, and bid that out separately? Never really heard of that. Nobody has done that yet. Again, that's how he thinks a little differently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I think that's ultimately his goal, then maybe that's something we look at. I don't know that we need to do that right this minute, but he's got a vision a little further ahead of, you know, some of us ADs, we kind of just like, what's what's <laughs> yeah. next, right? And that's what he's paid to do, right? He's paid to see a different vision. Um, so I think it's, again, part of the conversation. Is it the right time? Do we need to do it now? Is it the right institution? What do they bring into the Big 12? I think all those conversations still need to happen. And, We'll see what, you know, as we go through the process. The media has kind of almost pitted the Big 12 against the Pac-12, fairly <laughs> adversarial, it feels like. I think it you, started last year when Brett said we're open for business, <laughs> yeah. if you remember. And, really, and it's probably like the John year. on his YouTube channel, too. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, you got to watch out for those YouTube guys. <laughs> one year anniversary of, of those comments. But, yeah, for you, I mean, you're a guy that has a Pac-12 background and, and I'm sure have Pac-12 connections. How do you view what that is behind closed doors for you guys? Well, you know, I think we – Obviously, I remember the feeling when Texas and Oklahoma left and what that felt like as an AD when they were talking about the Big 12 is going to fall apart and they were talking about schools going somewhere else and we weren't mentioned, right? We weren't in some of those conversations and how it made me feel, how it made our coaches feel. Uh, it's not a good feeling. And I do have friends that are ADs in, in the Pac-12 and I hope they don't ever experience that. But at the end of the day, if, if there is a school that's really interested in coming and bettering themselves, you know, I guess we, we certainly have to take a look at that. If, again, if it betters us in, in terms of you know, TV viewership or it makes sense, but uh, it's not a good feeling. And I don't want to be the guy driving and saying, oh, the heck with you, AD, you'll deal with it. Let's go get this, this school and, and really blow up the big the Pac-12 because I don't think that's good for anybody. Um, but if something were to happen, I think we have to be willing to take a look at them and see if it makes sense for us. You've mentioned how you guys are kind of pivoting away from the facility stuff at this point because you got a lot done that you wanted to do. You're kind of setting aside the, the coaching stuff and getting that accomplished too. So what's that maybe next goal beyond that? Well, a little bit we touched on it uh, is just how do we take our donors and, the, and their commitment to us and from the facilities and still have those conversations and say, you know what? Mr. and Mrs. Donor, you've been giving us these dollars towards facilities over the last five years. Can we redirect that, you know, towards more operation? I mean, our, you know, we raised $24 million this year in, in Ahern fund dollars. It's a record for us. Thank you, everybody that had to <laughs> deal with that. Thank you for Ahern fund staff. Um, so, but we know our finite, we can't continue to raise ticket prices. I mean, if we're selling out everything in football, the, the, the incremental revenue increase is not going to be that much. Basketball is a big for us right now. We're going to see, you know, obviously we've already seen the uptick in basketball sales. Eventually, we know what our TV revenue is, right? Eventually, the way to grow our revenue so we can invest is coming from our annual giving. And we have to go to our donors and say, guys, we have this thing called Power and Excellence. You've been giving us in facilities. Would you consider continuing to give that or some amount towards that and so that Ahern money goes from 24 to 25 to maybe 26. So we have those dollars and, you know, we, you know, other revenue sources. We've already talked about, you know, we may look at where we are looking at Bramlage. Is that a opportunity for us to generate more revenue? It has to be the right thing. We, we're going to honor Fred Bramlage. We're going to honor the family. But is that an opportunity for us? So whatever revenue opportunity, we have to look at all those to just continue to invest back in our athletes and back in our staff so we can keep them and keep good staff. When people saw parts of Chris Kleiman's contract, they were probably not surprised that there was a link between you two. <laughs> but maybe between Coach Kleiman and President Linton, just because there wasn't that you know tie for very long, right. just how much is that just because he's that much of an asset to the athletic department? Yeah, I, you talk about President Lynn? President yeah, Lynn. I mean, obviously, you've got to have a president that understands athletics and, and appreciates it. Um, and President Lynn's come in as a new president, has done a great job. He, he really enjoys athletics, but he doesn't understand all the nuances of it. Um, but we also know that if the president were to change, uh, that could change, you know, my relationship. And I've been very fortunate. You know, <laughs> Dick Myers and now 
Rich Linton, I've been lucky. As an AD, sometimes you don't always have great presidents like I've had. Um, but yeah, it is important. And, and certainly we all report, we report to somebody and I report to the president. And you know, if, if he's on, if, in, on board and with us, then that makes everybody a lot more comfortable. Yeah, to go back, I want to backtrack a little bit. When you were talking about Bramblage, what, what potential like revenue opportunities do you think are, are there? Well, we don't know yet. I mean, the, the company that's helping us, um, you know, is, has done similar venues and similar type uh, communities with the similar type corporate involvement. Um, you know, I, I would hope at, at least over a, a 10 year period, it's, you know, at least 10 million or more, mm -hmm. um, which would be about a million a year. but. I don't know that yet. They're just starting the process, and if it if it doesn't hit a number that we're comfortable with, we're not going to change just to change. Um, but I, again, the, the Fred Bramling's name's going to be very, very much a part of the facility in some way, shape, or form. We don't know what that looks like yet, but uh, he the reason that building got built was because his involvement, his willingness to help. Uh, the Bramling family has been great. We've talked to them about it. They we're keeping them informed as we go along the process, and we'll see what it turns out. Are you are you considering any of the fan names that have been out there on on Twitter? I haven't seen. I, okay. I've seen a few of them. I've heard a few of them. I haven't seen that much, but uh, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, question, kind of big picture for you here. I mean, at this point in your career, a lot has changed in college athletics, right? You're having to deal with a lot more headaches, I think, for a lot of administrators <laughs> these days. How, how much longer do you want to do this? You know, I, I tell, well, first of all, my wife said you're not retiring, so I guess I better keep, if I did, I'm going to drive a, either work at Walmart and be a greeter or <laughs> drive, you know, I'm trying to, I look for jobs, I thought, well, maybe I could be like at a rodeo and just be the shoot opener. Okay. That'd be a little dangerous, I think, at my age. Uh, I also, when I'm going through the airport, the guys that drive the carts, I, but we don't have an yeah. airport big enough in Manhattan that we need a cart, so that's probably out. Um, I'm still having fun. Uh, and, and I enjoy who I get to come to work with every day. I still enjoy the student athletes. If you look at our guys, I mean, they're great guys, not just football, but our athletes are so fun to be around. And, and so all the other stuff, if you get too wrapped up into it, you begin to lose sight of why you come to work every day. And right now I still having fun coming into my office. I still love being around the coaches. So as long as I'm healthy and can do it, I hope that President Linton wants to keep me around as long as, as, long as I can be. Last one for me, because fans like to hear it this time of year, at least an update. I don't know if you have the details off the top of your head, but where does ticket sales stand for football and basketball at this point? Well, I think football, we're about 96 or 97% renewal rate in season tickets. We're way ahead in revenue already. Um, our, our top single game sellers, I think our TCU, we still have some seats available. I think eventually all of our games will be, home games will be sold out. Basketball, we're 1,700 season tickets ahead of last year, um, which is massive. Yeah. And I think, again, hats off. And, and, and women's basketball, too, is up big, too. I think they know the team we could very potentially be with Yoki coming back and some of our new, new ladies on the team. Um, there's a lot of energy right now behind our program. It started last year, and it's good feeding off into this year. Uh, I think our social media and our media relations teams have done a great job of capturing the success and energizing our fan base to want to be a part of that, and that's been really fun to see. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll kind of close with this. This has been a hot-button topic around here. I've heard a lot of people ask about this, but with the gambling investigations that we've seen going on both in college sports, professionally right now, like how, how much of a conversation piece is that with it's, your student it's a, athletes? It's a big one, and we're actually going to get involved with a company. We've actually been involved with a company called U.S. Integrity. Uh, they monitor nationally bets and and in lines and we get re we were with them last year we got reports weekly of where our lines were going we never got a call on any major issue they have created a new product it's called ProAbet. Uh, we're working with them and basically what that does is um, if we can do it if we can do it it allows us to be able to see if there's anybody betting on sports that shouldn't be betting on it's very complicated uh, we're actually working with a conference the conference is going to do it conference wide um, I was, I've was i been worried since we legalized betting day one that it was going to be way too easy for athletes to be able to bet on sports. Uh, it, to me, it's the biggest concern I have of detrimental to our, our world of college athletics. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of nefarious folks out there that want to take part and make money, and the amount of money that's in the betting world, it's in the bees. It's a lot of bees. Um, 
I do think the, the NCAA has begun to realize there's some punishments that they need to back off on. Uh, that if an athlete does get in trouble, if they're betting, if they put five bucks in a pool, that's one thing. Okay, that's okay. Granted, it's still technically betting, but is it really as bad as betting on your own team? So I think the NCAA has done a good job so far of looking at changing that a little bit, but we have to be on top of it. It literally is going to be the main conversation that we're having with our student athletes this year. We're going to use those schools as examples that if you bet and you're not supposed to, we're going to, we're going to find out. Yeah. And you can't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth your career, particularly if you're betting on your own team or, or another sport. It's, it's not good. Just, just one more thing for athletic directors yeah, to worry to, about, to, right? Just uh, keep them awake at night. <laughs> yeah. Or to have a Bud Light in the afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Or some 360 vodka That's or Ben Holiday bottled them on bourbon, yes. Yeah, vodka, soda is a good summer drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, we, we dig know. it, we dig it. Gene, thank you so much for uh, taking some time. Enjoy uh, the rest good of your, uh, your trip. Good to be with you guys. Good yeah. to see you. Thanks. Appreciate it.